untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Pack one, pick one. And we've got two pretty good options to choose between. We've got Nahab, Dreadhorde Champion and Arlen, Voice of the Pack, which can generate a bunch of 3-3 three, three wolves thanks to the passive ability. Nahab is pretty strong for a 4-drop. Arlen kind of wants to go in the Proliferate and Planeswalker Synergy decks. And then if we pick up Arlen, Polenbright Druid would be an awesome one to try and wheel. Uh, also a big fan of the Tithebear Giant if we end up in a bit of a ramp archetype. With Nahab, any red cards here, Honor the God Pharaoh and Burning Prophet are both excellent. So it's a tough call. I think I'm leaning Arlen, just because I slightly prefer green in the set over red, but it's definitely personal preference here. Both cards are excellent. Let the nightly hunt commence. Alright. Obnixil's Cruelty, one of the better commons in the set. That's probably going to be my pick. Had we taken Nahab, I guess there's an argument for Solar Blaze, but probably would still take Cruelty. Um, and Black Green is also one of my favorite archetypes in this set. If we can get some ramp and mana fixing, can often splash some of the more powerful cards. And the set has a lot of powerful bombs in it, so being able to splash them with cards like Gateway Plaza, Paradise Druid, and the three mana enchantment that goes on a land are all great ways to potentially make your deck more powerful. Green seems open, as we have a pretty late challenger troll, which is quite strong. Don't mind taking that here. Also a big fan of the snare spinner, so if we can wield that, that would be great. Lots of three mana flyers in the set. And then Spark Reaper is also quite nice, especially if you have a few Planeswalkers, because you can potentially sacrifice a Planeswalker after it's used most of its minus abilities, like Arlen, if we minus Arlen three times, we can still sacrifice it to draw a card. And then Aid the Fallen is perfect for this deck, since we'll usually end up with a few Planeswalkers, and this can get back a Planeswalker and a creature. And there's also Mana Geode for a bit of ramp. Crunch and Electromancer, both good in their respective archetypes. Electromancer typically blue-red, Crunch typically red-green. Griffin's also fine. And then the Lorun Enforcer, also one of the better white cards. Although it does have the drawback of not tapping down the zombie army tokens. Alright, big fan of Bloomhulk. Great with plus one counters, but also good with planeswalkers. Otherwise, if we were red-green, Domri's Ambush would be excellent, but Bloomhulk's perfectly fine here. Could make a case for Guild Globe as a bit of mana fixing, in case we end up splashing. Uh, Behemoth, not exciting, but you know, sometimes if you need a 5-drop, this is actually not as bad as it looks. And then we see some good red cards with the Turret's Ogre and Tybalt's Rager. So red-green might be slightly more open than uh, green-black, but I think I still want to lean towards black if I can. Alright, so we're seeing more red cards. Another Ogre, Pyrohelix, Cyclops, and then in blue there's Contentious Plan, which is nice if we end up with a couple proliferate synergies. So we could also end up maybe red-green splash black for cruelty. So for now... I think it's between Pyrohelix and Ogre. I'll take a Pyrohelix, just because we don't have much removal yet. And a couple good black and green cards, or I shouldn't say good, but playable. Uh, Stinger, Shriek Diver. Probably don't need more expensive stuff. Doesn't look like a great Varaskas finisher deck. I think I'm leaning Stinger in the hopes that we can wheel Snare Spinner so we have something against opposing flyers instead of having to take Shriek Diver. But none of these are particularly exciting. Storm the Citadel is not particularly great. Don't remember ever seeing this cast. 
and not a set where return to nature is a high priority. I guess we'll take a Prismite, but hopefully we don't need to play it. Alright, Arlen's Wolf's fine. Also has a bit of synergy with Arlen herself. So after pack one... Ooh, never mind, there's a Snare Spinner. Uh, there's also another Ogre, but I think I want a Spinner here. Just a good defensive 2-drop. Helps against Flyers, which we can be weak to. So yeah, we're definitely green, but second color is still up for grabs. Oath of Kaya. You know, fine removal spell, but we've got a band together in green instead. There's a Tithe Bear Giant, which I can hope to wheel. Giant's Greeting in red, also quite strong. So those are kind of the standout cards in our colors. Pegasus, also quite good for aggressive decks, and then Cosmina, a great blue card. Which, you know, I could still technically take Cosmina and pivot, or potentially splash Cosmina. But I think I still prefer Band Together here, also quite good with Death Touch. Well, now there's no great black or green card. Uh, Manticore I don't mind in red. Nahiri's double red, so that's a little bit more difficult to support, and Nahiri's also a bit better in more aggressive decks. But there is a Rescuer Sphinx and an Avon Eternal, which are both excellent blue cards. A Sphinx especially good with Planeswalkers, since we can reset them to get more minus abilities going. So I think I'm taking Sphinx. Um, maybe slightly regretting not taking Cosmina now, but... We'll see whether or not that pans out. Another Domri's Ambush also would have been nice in red-green. Could take Angrath, which we could play in black-green. Although black hasn't seemed particularly open. Wrangler could still be okay in our deck if we have a few four-powered creatures, but not going to be at its best. But I could still see taking it just as a good two-drop. I mean, I could speculate on Ambush, but if we can avoid going three colors, since we don't have much fixing yet, then it's probably better. And Angrath, while okay, it's not one of the more powerful Planeswalkers. All right, now there's Paradise Druid. That gives us a way to splash more easily. Great two drop. And this is a format with a lot of powerful expensive cards, so just being able to ramp into our four and five drops a turn sooner is a big deal. Center Nurture also would be quite nice, but definitely take Paradise Druid here. I can commit to black by taking probably Davriel over Toll of the Invasion and end up kind of black-green maybe with a splash, or I can take a Jaya's Greeting as a great red removal spell and go red-green, but that is after we've passed two copies of Domri's Ambush already, so we're probably not going to get much else. I think I take Davriel. Goes well with our Aid the Fallen. And we can hopefully pick up more synergies with it. I do hope this mask is intimidating enough. Uh, can take another Crawl Stinger. Charity Extractor can be fun if you pick up Hotly, so it deals damage equal to its toughness. Otherwise, typically not very good. And Finisher, also not particularly exciting. Take a stinger. Alright, Pollen Bright Druid's fine. Good to drop, nice synergy with Proliferate. Gateway Plaza also consideration if we wanted to splash. Uh, Spark Harvest, that's pretty late, so I guess black is kind of open. Now, Spark Harvest at its best if we pick up some amass cards, like Toll of the Invasion that makes the 1-1 token we can sacrifice. Alright, we wield Tithe Bear Giant, so pretty happy with Black Green now. I think we've settled into our niche. But we give Blue and Red a shot. So would like to pick up some more Ramp cards. A 
and then some amass cards would be nice. Silver Wings also playable. Ooh, well, just about one of the best cards in a set. And it's on color, so couldn't be happier. Toll of the Invasion, of course, would be a nice one to get as well, but well, let's go. Warrior Queen Necromancer has a nice ring to it. This bank is pretty disappointing. And there's really nothing I want. I guess I'll take my 20 gems. Don't want Samut. Spark Reaper would also be a nice one to pick up. If we're just talking commons, one more removal spell, a Spark Reaper, and at least one Toll of the Invasion would make this deck nice. Alright, I'll take a Lanzotep Reaver, although there's also Bloom Hulk. So both decent. Lanzotep Reaver quite good with Spark Harvest would be nice if we picked up a Spark Reaper, which can sacrifice creatures to draw cards. Do we need another 4-drop? I guess I wouldn't mind another Bloom Hulk here, looking at our curve. Very nice with our Planeswalkers as well. Ooh, Kiora. Kiora seems awesome with double Bloom Hulk, which we can ramp into. Kiora just ramps into our 6-drops as well eventually. Seems perfect. I'll show you dry walkers something truly spectacular. All right, so our deck is shaping up nicely. Can probably cut one of the top end cards here, but can uh, decide what we end up playing once we get to deck building. Second Aid the Fallen could be reasonable now that we have uh, four Planeswalkers, essentially. There's also the Wild Crafter, which, you know, is okay. Technically ramps, although if we don't draw an early creature, it's not at its best. I guess we can speculate on Wild Crafter and then maybe hope to wheel another Aid the Fallen late. And then, of course, Aid gets better if we have another Planeswalker. All right, there's eight the fallen. I'll take it now, and I probably play two. So still hoping for a spark reaper and maybe a toll of the invasion. And there's my toll of the invasion. Great with our spark harvest, and because this is such a bomb-heavy format, having a bit of discard if we're in black green is a nice way to answer those. As opposed to if you're in blue, you might have some counter spells instead. Sartox also okay, but we've got a few good 5 drops already. Another late Domri's Ambush. The Gruul player is going to be happy. Or I can just say draft it because it's an uncommon for the vaults and I don't need any of these two. Right, another Toll of the Invasion. Don't know if we'll play two, but it's definitely an option. Uh, do I need Crocodile? Not sure if it's better than Behemoth. Doesn't seem necessary in this deck. Don't know if I'm splashing Tybalt, but I guess it's an uncommon for the Vault. We do have both uh, Paradise Druids and Guild Globe for fixing. And I guess our Planeswalker 2 here. Alright. So no Spark Creeper, but yeah, our deck came together nicely. Maybe a little bit light on removal, but I've got some powerful Planeswalkers to make up for it. And then... How do we finalize it? Okay, maybe cut one Stinger. And then maybe Giant can go, since we've got two other six drops. Just for a curve. 
And then one more cut. Probably 17 lanes. Don't need Guild Globe, but having a random cantrip to draw us into our powerful Planeswalkers more consistently might not be a bad idea. If I had a second Snare Spinner, I would definitely play it. And I guess Guild Globe might still be the cut. And then Wrangler is also quite nice with Bloom Hulk. Arlen's Wolf has a bit of synergy with Arlen. So it's probably better than Stinger. Yeah, this seems okay. Got a nice balance of Planeswalkers and Creatures for Aid the Fallen. So we have a nice grindy late game. And then the mana distribution. Skew towards green. So 9-8. Could even go 10-7. Since I don't really need much black. And most of it it's in the late game. And if I find my green, I also get to fixing from Paradise Druids and from our Planeswalkers. So I think going 10 7 is fine. Alright, do we have a deck name for this one? And the Troll Toll. Sure. I've got Toll of the Invasion too. Alright, nice opening hand. Paradise Druid into Bloom Hulk, into another Bloom Hulk. Even if we're not proliferating, still seems pretty good. Prison Realm gets rid of Paradise Root. All right, it's fine by me. I guess we won't be ramping into Arlen, but there's an argument for you know holding Bloom Hulk until after Arlen to proliferate. That doesn't seem necessary. Well, well Ketra's one of the best cards in the set. Might actually be the best card. So can't let that untap. So Harvest sacrificing Snare Spinner. but it's going to be back in a few turns. Yeah, that's a good blocker. Nah, I guess we can take it out. I didn't have double black for Spark Harvest. Well, I didn't think we'll be able to kill them before they replay Oketra. So I can put them down to four. Maybe Davriel is my best hope here.
now I can play Arlen, sit back and hope that Davriel can close out the game. Opponents are two. So if they play out a creature to trigger a Catra, we can just jump, keep Davriel alive and kill them. And the more they attack, the more they're vulnerable on the way back, so... We're actually not in a terrible spot here. Alright, sweet. We beat God Eternal Akatra. Doesn't happen every day. Yeah, fine hand. At least we'll get some proliferate value this time around. Opponent on Black Rat, typically a sacrifice deck. That's a good play. Take three. Although we get to head back with Bloom Hulk. Next round play Behemoth. All right, Point's got some blue in there too. Tybalt. Yeah, Tybalt's quite strong. Good synergy in the Sacrifice deck too. So now if I were to attack Tybalt with both, what happens? They could double block Bloom Hulk with 1, 2 and 3, 3. And chump Polumbride Druids. <clears throat> or they could... I guess just... Chump Polumbride Druids... 3-3 three, three in front of Bloom Hulk. I guess it boils down to the same. Or they could... Yeah, there's a few different uh, ways they could do it. But I probably end up losing Bloom Hulk here. Yeah, it's probably fine. And then... We'll have to wait and see if Tybalt survives. Could use Silverwing to maybe finish it off. If not, Behemoth could be better. Opponent's definitely going to chump with a token since they can just make another one. And get one free damage. So silver wing to finish off the bolts probably worth it in case of proliferate shenanigans. And then we're in a great spot to top deck some of our six mana planeswalkers. All right, more planeswalkers, Sahili and Guild Globe. So glad we've got the silver wing to apply pressure here. Don't have a great attack on the ground. Toll of the Invasion could come in handy. Probably worth playing that first. Alright, Dam Breaker's gotta go. Weird can get back. Bleeding Edge, but it doesn't kill my Silverwing at least. And then... Probably want to finish off Tybalt. Sahili can also use the Guild Globe potentially to good effect. Just kind of a neat interaction with the Weird. But I don't know, I just want to get rid of Tybalt first. Oh, I feel like death.
Ooh, greeting. That's unfortunate. Now Sahili's just gonna keep on making tokens. And the synergy with Spellkeeper Weird is also real. Serpon makes an author weird, which they can then sacrifice, get back a spell, and then trigger Sahili once again, so it's a pretty strong loop. And the only way for us to break it is by killing Sahili or the Spellkeeper weird. And right now we're not really set up to do that. Kiora's a bit late to the party, probably want to hold her till we can actually draw a card. Yeah, I guess Sahili doesn't gain loyalty, so they only get one more use out of the minus two. So what's one of our better draws here? I mean, both our six mana Planeswalkers are good. Don't really have too many other flyers. So don't want to block with Behemoth because of Giant's Greeting. And don't want to block the Devil. So this seems fine. They could also get back uh, Cruelty instead. But I'm fine if that's the play. Or I mean the bleeding edge here. Alright, so now I can attack Sahili. They can chomp and sacrifice Weir to get back Outburst again. Keeping Cure in hand could be bad if they draw Toll of the Invasion, but I don't have a high likelihood of keeping Cure around if we play her. So I'd rather wait until we can play Cure and a big creature in the same turn. The Fallen could be nice. Kira is currently our first Planeswalker. So if they spend resources killing her, we're not too sad. Three, four, five. And then they might use Outburst to finish her off. I guess that works. I guess they can kill her in response, so I want to make use of the ability first. One drop ripples and grows. So I guess what they're planning is outburst my behemoth so they can block with the token and the three damage will finish it off. Yeah, I mean, that seems still fine since next turn I get to aid the fallen back, Kira, and probably behemoth. Alternatively, I could wait and use Behemoth as a blocker, and that way they don't get to use their mana here if they want to hold on to Outburst. I guess I can buy that too. I 
All right. Back to the depths. We'll see what happens here. Ponon did get to see a ton of cards with those outbursts. All right, now it's time to make some blocks. Strangely enough, the mass token is kind of scarier than the other one, since if they amass more onto the army, it could potentially deal kind of haste damage, if you will. So I think we block like this. If they have the six mana mass to it instant speed, or I guess it will be three. Uh, I guess I would rather block the other way around. With the token dying, it probably doesn't make a difference. Ooh, Massacre Girl. Alright. That was gonna wipe the board anyway. That's uh, quite the top deck. Minus two. And then, do I aid the Fallen or do I wait? I guess I could wait. In case they answer Liliana, we can get her back. Our opponent's not messing around. Good help well, I guess I ate the Fallen here. And then go for Kiora plus Troll, maybe? Or Bloomhole can proliferate. Although they're probably gonna kill Liliana and then I get Aether Fallen Liliana again. Yeah, I guess Troll might be the pick. Could also go for Snare Spinner to Chum Block for a turn. But I just have another Aether the Fallen, so. I guess there's a chance they just go face, in which case I can still aid the Fallen back, Bloom Hulk, Proliferate on Liliana, and then minus four. But yeah, I mentioned it'll kill Liliana. No, oh, well this was unpleasant. Aid the Fallen. And then, what's the plan? I guess I could go for Pollen Bright Druids, since I just need Sacrifice Fodder here. Play Liliana first. If I were you, I'd just surrender if I... Proliferates. And then minus four. A little death. Death. Uh, they couldn't minus Gil Globe or minus Sahili on Gil Globe since the creature is still legendary, so they would have had to sacrifice one. Fourteen cards remaining. This looks like a fun new toy. Each gives it personality. Don't think it matters too much here. I guess a counter here means it doesn't die to Obnixil's cruelty. And then I could even untamp the troll, but doesn't seem necessary.
Well, that was a pretty tense game. Well, I'm gonna need lane three. But Kira's nice with these uh, larger creatures. I think we'll have a look, which also sets up Spark Harvest. So next turn I can maybe go Kira into Spark Harvest. <laughs> Alright, that's a lot of Raging Crunches. There's an argument for taking Parahelix. Troll will stabilize me once I get to it. And if I don't take Pyrohelix, they could, if I block Assailant, finish off Snare Spinner and the token. And if they hold Pyrohelix, it can eventually finish off Troll if I block a Crunch. Now I do have the option of double blocking Assailant, so they might not attack with it, but I guess they have to attack to attack with Crunch. I want to keep the 1-1 one -one around... So I think I'm just gonna block like this. I guess there's also an argument for double blocking. Put in place another crunch, then I go Kiora, Spark Harvest sacking Snare Spinner, and then Crunch can't attack. Maybe that's not so bad. Stinger's also a nice one. Yeah, let's try it. Right, it's a bat. Let's get moving. Haste creature would be disastrous. But if we draw lands next turn I can play troll. A Wrangler instead. So now what? I can Toll of the Invasion hope to get our last card. Or we can play Stinger as a reasonable blocker, which can keep Kiora alive. Although so can the token. So maybe you want to get value of Toll before they empty their hand. Sure. Alright, just aligned. They might just go face here too. I'll take it. Right, now we've got a good blocker. And next turn we can double spell. Could even attack with troll. Since they can double block it and then untap it with Kiora. It's probably worth it. Pollen Bright Roots could also be nice. Ooh, Bloom Hulk. Alright, I have probably just attack with Troll again.
Alright, Bully will change the math a little bit. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I guess Crunch and doesn't... it can block alone. So, yeah, I'm surprised they didn't put the counter on Crunch to be able to block Challenger Troll here. But we had a Pollen Bride route, so it wasn't gonna matter too much. Uh, yeah, I guess we can keep this. They might cast all of the invasion before we get a chance to do so. Currently no huge upsides to playing Kiora. And if they have the counter spell for planeswalkers and creatures, it's also better to toll. Alright, they have Epiphany, Double Dismissal, and Herald of the Dreadhorde. Probably just take the card draw spell. And then leave them with two bound spells and a ground creature, but they're not really pressuring us. Bloom Hulk, excellent, so now I can go Kyura into Snare Spinner to set a Bloom Hulk for next turn. Mm, that's fine. Alright, opponents aggressively using their bounce spells. And we'll just block here. So I can go Wrangler into Bloomhook. And yep, grow the Wrangler right away. Still have a removal spell at the ready. And thanks to Stinger we can take out any creature pretty much. Thanks to Death Touch working in unison with the damage effect. Great spot to draw Liliana. Can make double black by untapping Swamp with Kiora. But I'll take Arlen as well. I'm not too picky. Alright, so they really want to kill Kiora. Could still save her. It's probably worth it. And then... I guess we trade for Herald, since if they get a bigger army I can still band together eventually, or block it with Stinger. Probably still play a Bloom Hulk here. Alright, there's Arlen. Got a Death Toucher to block the zombie. If they remove Stinger, it's a little annoying, but then I'll probably let Kiora go. Opponent's been discarding a 6 drop. They had a third dismissal. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens here. Sure. 
even have Arlen's Wolf to combine with Arlen. So, play our Planeswalker. I will protect my kin with my life. Please protect my pack. And then we'll just chill. So their armies have death touch thanks to Vizier, but we can just kill Vizier even at instant speed. I guess there's Crush Descent, although that requires a target. And there's Lasso Tap Plating, which is a mass one. Yeah, I think we just let that go. And commence the end game, they cannot cast with five lands. So. Should be fine. And hello, Liliana. Well, that's probably worthwhile. They could be sitting on a counterspell, I suppose. So there's an argument for playing Arlen's Wolf first. Keep a band together. Let's see. Yeah, we would even draw a card from Kira since it enters with a counter. We have double blank thanks to Kira on tapping our swamp. But I'm mostly just worried about a potential counterspell. And then we can probably get pretty aggressive here. Have band together at instant speed in case something goes wrong. Do I want to untap anything with Kyura? Doesn't seem necessary. Cruelty takes out Wolf. Opponent keeps digging. Probably down to block and then band together the Vizier. And now... Oh no! I was gonna say our opponent taps out and we can resolve Liliana, but a top deck stole of the invasion. Doesn't matter since we have eight the fallen. <laughs> oh, opponent. I guess getting anti flying tech might be worth it. <laughs> ah. In this hand, I don't mind. Good early game, and then we're in a good position to top deck our bombs. Yeah, I guess Kira into Bloomhawk is a pretty decent curve. Could also toll first. Although then Kira might be under more pressure. Although we would get a bit of value from the MS and proliferate. I think I should toll still. And then we'll see whether or not we can afford to Kira or if we Bloom Hulk first. Yeah, that's quite a draw. So three lands. Pegasus is a long term problem, although I can cruelty it. Evolution Sage doesn't do a whole lot right now. Crocodile we can block on the ground. So I think Pegasus and Griffin are kind of the two biggest problems. Pegasus is the more immediate threat. So that's probably what I should take. And then band together. You know, it's going to be effective too, but I think we can fight through it. And 
and then I can keep my cruelty for the Enforcer Griffin. Alright, so definitely looks like I want to get Kyurai in play first. And then they wouldn't be able to kill her. And next turn Bloom Hulk stabilizes me. If they band together Bloom Hulk and kill Kyura. Yeah, I guess that's probably gonna happen. Hmm, so there's an argument for cruelty on Sage then. If I just play Bloom Hulk now, what happens? I'll have a 4 4 and a 2 2. And then band together is still not that bad for me. I guess playing one Bloom Hulk and then Kyura and then another Bloom Hulk might be better. And that way I save cruelty for the griffin. Yeah, that seems fine. No attacks. So now if I were to play Kiora, end of turn they might band together Bloomhawk, but that's still okay. Could technically also attack with Bloom Hulk and then untap it to maybe get 4 damage in, but then they're probably gonna just band together it anyway, so this saves me 1 loyalty. Alright, no end of turn band together. So I'm pretty happy with how things played out in the end. We've got the flyers covered and we've got Kyura for card advantage. Alright, if they go Horizons into land, that could be bad. Alright, no land, luckily. Now it's probably fine to send... And then untap. Nature flows with vigor. Can still decide to cruelty the sage before it's too late. Uh, and there's a griffin. So now, probably gonna cruelty griffin. Play Paradise Druid. Don't strictly have to kill the Griffin now since we can take a hit on Kiora. But I'm gonna end up doing that eventually. So the question is if we can maybe develop our board a little bit better in the meantime. I wanna get Wrangler in play before Behemoth if we can help it. Uh, might end up using Druid to proliferate. Nah, I think I still like that line. Can maybe even wait on Cruelty, although that does get punished by some pump spells. So it might not be worth it. And then... Maybe send a 3-3? Three, because three. if they play a land, I'm not going to be able to block with a 3-3 three, three anyways. Sure. I could definitely be more aggressive with my Bloom Hulks, but given that we're stuck on four lanes, I kind of want to keep Kyura around, especially when Behemoth draws me an extra card. If my plan was to attack with Bloom Hulk, I could have waited on Cruelty, but since I was leaving Bloom Hulk back, this seems fine. Ooh. Well, that seems strong. So now I actively want to bait out a trade. So if I send double Bloom Hulk and a 3-3, that probably should entice a block. Oh, 
Satan surges like rise. I am the master here. And then I think I get rid of Paradise Druid. I'm pretty likely to draw some lanes. And our point explodes. Well, that's understandable. I have to say, Kiora's also been doing a lot of work this draft. Got a lot of large creatures to go with it. Pull and Bright Druid. As much as I want to toll of the invasion, I think I got a Kiora here. Still gonna Bloom Hulk and then my Cura doesn't necessarily die if they get rid of Bloom Hulk and then next turn I can maybe double three. If they can't remove Bloom Hulk, we're in great shape. That's still okay. Happy to trade. Going face, still happy to trade, I think. If they have a pump spell, that's fine. So it goes Spark Harvest plus Toll of the Invasion is also a combo. Well, well, well. So I don't have to take Ugin now since we have more discard to follow up. So I guess we take Bloom Hulk. And then I can Spark Harvest the Wolf. Or I can Davriel make him discard again. And then I'll lose Kiora. But that's probably fine. They might actually attack Davriel so they can protect their Ugin and then we can Toll of the Invasion it. And then we'll still have Kiora for Bloomhawk. Ah, and they got rid of Ugin. Fair enough. Uh oh. So, one at Davriel, two at Davriel, and at Kiora. So, we're losing both planeswalkers no matter what since we can block the wolf. Okay, I saw belly flopped. So I can harvest first killing a wolf and then toll the raptor. And then troll will eventually stabilize us. Sure. I guess attack first. Very important. So we're going to take a bit of a beating, but then we should be okay.
they can double block our four powered creatures. Yeah, this creature will eventually be relevant. But for now we can keep attacking. They don't have any good blocks on whole control. Points at 12. And we should be able to attack for the win. Alright. That was a close one. It looked scary for a second. Alright, so we managed to 7 win our War of the Spark draft. All those gems. Oh, do we get a wild card? Hey. Alrighty. But yeah, for now, want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.